Good morning. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the weekend. Welcome to Peace Through the Word, daily devotional ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church, Benson, Arizona, in Cochise County of the United States of America. Peace through the Word. Peace in a very chaotic, unpeaceful, tumultuous world. Quite a paradox, amen? Most assuredly, the news is incredibly unpeaceful. Incredibly unpeaceful. Um, so where do we go to find peace in, an, in a tumultuous world and country in which we find ourselves living? Only in Jesus Christ and in his word, the Bible. No place else. And so this morning, my brothers and sisters, we're going to be looking at the subject, believing or trusting in God. Not in anything else. Definitely not in the United States or anything of the, uh, of the United States. <laughs> or in anything else, for that matter. Because that will fail you miserably all the time. <laughs> but only in Jesus. Believing or trusting in God, who is Jesus Christ. It's not Allah. It's not Confucius. It's not Buddha. It's not the Pope. It's not the saints. And it most certainly is not you. It is Jesus Christ. So I pray that that's going to bless us, inspire us, encourage us, enlighten us, but also give us genuine, real peace this morning as we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, this is the day in which the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. Glad in it. All right. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. None other name. Just the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ is to be praised. So better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. God's courts are just, have justice. God's courts are perfect. Everything else is an atrocity. So better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Most assuredly. Not in American courts. <laughs> okay. Not hardly. It's too bad. But that's a fact. All right. So I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Most assuredly. So make me to know your ways, O Lord, and then teach me your paths. Not, not somebody else's, but your paths. So sanctify us, that is, make us holy in your truth in a world that is reeking of lies and falsification. So why? Because your word, the Bible, is truth. Everything else is false and a lie. Only the word of God in the Holy Bible is truth. Nothing else is. Tremendous things being said here. So from the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Lord God is our strength and our song, and He has become our salvation. With joy we will draw water from the wells of salvation, and we will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, 
Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Because the Lord God is our strength and our song, and he has become our salvation. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitants of Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The Lord God is our strength and our song, and he has become our salvation. So glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, Dr. Martin Luther is going to unpack for us the scripture reference for his foundation on believing or trusting in God. And that being St. John chapter 14, verse 1. And we have this recording. Jesus says this, Don't be troubled. Believe in God, believe in me. The word believe is trust. Trust in God, trust in me. It's one and the same. But notice what Jesus says. He says, don't be troubled. And we've got a lot of things that have just come down in the news media and so on and so forth that might make us troubled, may make us angry, might make us a whole bunch of stuff. So these words of Jesus are very apropos right now. Don't be troubled people. Trust in God. Trust in Jesus. It's the same thing. So let's see how this unpacks for us this morning in order to give us genuine real peace in a very, in a very unpeaceful, tumultuous world. Christ is saying here, you have heard that you should trust in God, but I want to show you how to really find him so you won't start worshiping something that you made up in your head, like we do. If you want to believe in the true God, then believe in me, Jesus says. If you want to invest your faith and trust in the right place where it will never fail, then invest in me. For all of God lives in me. Later, he tells them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm not a way, a truth, and a life, one of many. And that's in St. John 14, verse 6. In other words, whoever sees me sees the Father, God the Father. That's, what, that's because Jesus and God the Father are one and the same. When you're looking at Jesus, you're looking in the eyes of God, and you're not being killed for it. All right. So whoever hears me hears the Father. Therefore, if you want to meet God, then take a hold of him and me and through me. If you have me, you also have the Father. What, what, what more conclusive evidence do we need? Jesus is God Almighty, yet we've got denominations that vehemently deny that, which is ludicrous. But they do. They think they know more than God. They, they, know, they think they know more than the Bible. You, people, you don't know anything. <laughs> the ignorance is, is astounding. It's absolutely foolish to think that you know more than the Bible. Absolutely foolish. Totally. But we got a lot of foolish people running around, I'm telling you. Most assuredly. So, he says, if you want to meet God, then take a hold of him in me and through me. If you have me, you also have the Father. The Father himself testifies about me. In the Gospels, Jesus repeatedly declares that he is from the Father. He doesn't speak and act on his own. Instead, the Father commands that the whole world should believe that Christ is God. No one should believe in any other person or accept any other way to know God than through Christ. Christ is the only way. Yeah, we've got people that say, no, there are many ways. It's, heaven is a common destination. Always lead to the same place. Nonsense. No, it doesn't. It's only Jesus. No one else. All the other religions that, 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 that don't uh, support Jesus are not going to heaven. They're going to hell. Plain, pure, and simple. And if you're trusting in that, so are you. It's as simple as that. 
So, it's certain that whoever tries to go around Christ won't meet the true God. No kidding. That's for sure. God is completely in Christ and places himself in Christ for us. No one will be able to succeed in dealing with God apart than apart from Christ. So if you want to uh, uh, bifurcate yourself from Christ, that's up to you. But you're going to pay the consequences. No one will find God on the basis of human thoughts and devotion and human opinion. Whoever wants to take the right path with his faith and not lose his way should begin where God has placed the path and where God wants to be found. Where does Jesus say he will always be found? In the ballpark? In family get-togethers? Where does he say I'll always be found? He says I'll always be found where my word is proclaimed and my sacraments are administered in accordance with my directives. It's only in his church. Yet people stay away in droves. But these same people that are staying away in droves will tell you unequivocally they're Christian. <laughs> not hardly. There's not enough evidence to back up that confession. And it, there isn't. So, uh, uh, God has placed the path where God wants to be found, which is his church. Otherwise, everything he does and believes is useless. That's from scripture, folks. That's not from Ron York. So if you've got a problem with that, your problem is with God and Jesus Christ and not me. Okay? Serious business, but we're living in very serious, tumultuous times. So it's high time that the church starts saying these things without being concerned about being a source of offense. If we're offensive, so be it. It's time the church becomes salt and light. Salt is a preservator, but it's also an irritant. When you pour it on a wound, stings, burns, hurts. Church needs to sting. Give people a sting. You can't bifurcate the two. You can't accentuate one property and forego the other. Salt and light. Salt preservator and an irritant light to point the way. Because this world, this country doesn't have a clue. Plain, pure, and simple. All right? So, this is the word of the Lord, brothers and sisters. Thanks be to God. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens, most assuredly. So, look, blessed are those who keep the word of God. In other words, who do it. All right? So, Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. <clears throat> Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. That means put it into practice. Take it from here to here to your feet. So Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. So my brothers and sisters, taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray the prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer, and together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for the gift of divine peace and of pardon. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. For the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. For this nation, most assuredly, and for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. For all those in need, for the hungry and the homeless, for the widowed and the orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and the dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. One God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue to pray. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger. And we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil, that all of our doings in life may please you. For into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls and all things. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. So Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Raised from the dead, he will never die again. Death has no more dominion over him. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Dying Christ dies to sin once for all. Living, he lives to God. So grant yourselves as dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. So let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. My brothers and sisters, thank you so much for chiming in this morning to Peace Through the Word. I really pray that it has blessed you, inspired you, and given you genuine real peace in this very unpeaceful, tumultuous world and country in which we live. So thank you for chiming in this morning. It's a beautiful day here in southern Arizona in Cochise County today. And I pray it's a beautiful day wherever you might be. And uh, so I convey the blessings of the Lord to you in all of abundance and wish you tremendous blue skies. <laughs>